Right guys, welcome to Cuisine TV, where we quiz the cuisine. This time we bring you a new series. This is Cuisine in Bangladesh. And we're going to begin our epic food journey here in Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. But to start, we're in Puran Dhaka, ancient Dhaka. And just look around, you look at all the hustle, the bustle, there's cars, there's rickshaws, there's motorbikes, there's cows, there's dogs, there's everything. I love this atmosphere, I love the hustle and bustle. This is incredible. We're going to start our food tour in Puran Dhaka. This is the ancient part of Dhaka. This is the historical center of Dhaka. This is where all the magic has happened for decades. Some of the buildings here have been around since the 7th, the 8th century. We've had the Mughal dynasty that's ruled over. We've had the Bengal Sultanate that's ruled over this place. We've also had the British Raj that's been here. There's so many different cultures, so many different influences and so many different reasons to come to Dhaka and try the food. In Puran Dhaka, we're going to begin by trying loads of different foods, loads of different classic foods that the locals here love. And then we're going to take you around Dhaka. We're going to take you around Silet. Naeem is also going to be showing you parts of Bangladesh that I'm not going to be able to get to. The two of us together will bring you an epic food journey of Bangladesh. Of course, both of our motherlands. So we are super, super excited about this. So much chaos, so much chaos. This a selection of roster dishes here in Dhaka City, Puran Dhaka. This is going to be phenomenal. We've come to try especially a borta meal. Borta, as you know, is a series of loads of different food stuff that's mushed up, pummeled, and there's chilies and all sorts of spices added to it. And it's a very traditional way of eating Bangladeshi cuisine. So we've come to a place called Nirob Hotel. Um, there's a thing in Bangladesh about calling restaurants hotels for some reason, don't ask me why, but Nirob Hotel is actually a restaurant and it's been serving the good people of Dhaka for decades. There's an array of different food items on offer today and we're going to give you a whistle-stop tour of some of the best porta dishes. Cool, I think we should start with this one. Aubergine, so it's grilled aubergines. Okay. Right. You want to try this one? Let's, let's go. Try it. Sort me out. Like this Obviously one. a plate of rice. This is just, this actually isn't a borta, this is an aubergine, a fried aubergine. So, aubergine and rice. Oh, that is delicious. Mm. That is delicious. So this is hitting the spot. You can taste the turmeric mm. and the mustard oil. And it's, it's almost like a steak, right? So, yeah. yeah, it's a very, very meaty, meaty to a steak. Very, very meaty vegetable dish. So that is delicious. This is the brain, the beef brain. This is beef brain borta. Very, very mushy and creamy. It's quite warm actually. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh. It's got a very interesting texture. It's quite jelly-like quite slimy but very creamy. creamy very very creamy quite a rich item i'd say it's tasty though i mean i like thick. it it has that thick dairy creamy yeah. taste to it almost it's, it's like cheese almost like a dessert no mm. but with a spice spiced cheese oh it's, it's like very good thinning. it's like you're having cheese it's yeah. honestly like you're having cheese Spice is a good turmeric there is flying as per usual that is very very delicious i like that one all right so, so next Let's go in for this one. This is, uh, this a, is a pumpkin. A pumpkin borta. Pumpkin borta. Let's go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Mm. <laughs> that is really good. And that's special because it's got the sweetness. Sweetness of the pumpkin. 
you mix that in with the spicy spicy flavors and that is actually super delicious next this is a small fish porta, so it's literally a puny fish that's been pummeled up and again added to that is the chilies the spices that you'd expect in any porta. we mix it up with some rice here we go again oh that's very good that's actually quite creamy as well <coughs> almost like the salmon taste yeah like in Bangladesh you have a lot of the fish aren't from seawater mm. whereas this one has a similar taste to the seawater so it's very true very true it's very similar to salmon you're right it's quite a fatty meaty fish let's try some shudki okay we've got shudki here again so this one could be dangerous in terms of heat <laughs> in terms so. of heat in terms of pungency take a little bit of the shudki this is probably going to be the spiciest dish that we'll here. have on this trip. Mm, very pungent. Every time that just blows my head off. The pungency of the shukti is just delicious. I love the flavors, I love the taste. Right level of salt content, right level of spice. Shukti goes well with spice because of the pungency. So you get explosions on all sides in your taste buds. It's so, so delicious. It's not as spicy as I expected it to be, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. Um, some, some places this is just unbearably hot. So that was like hot enough. It satisfies those cravings, but not too hot. Like not leave it overpowers the fishy taste. Now. You never want to be left in a hospital bed. Yeah, that's true. Right, next, I'm gonna try some fish eggs. A good bit of fish eggs. Fish eggs and rice. Mm -hmm. Lovely combo. Mm. Mm. There's something very special about fish eggs, isn't there? The texture small bubbly bitty but very nice again a common theme and a lot of the dishes is very creamy right yeah it's a combination of creaminess and spiciness mixed into one dish with lots of mustard oil yeah yeah you can't get enough of butter honestly you could butter anything i can literally get him pummel him up and make him into a butter that's the beauty of it you can get any food item butter it and it always tastes delicious i want to take you to the fried fish this is fried ruimas so this is the queen fish of Bangladesh. We've got the boal, which is almost like the king, and then the rui is seen as the queen. We've got a boal over here as well. We're literally fresh out the oil. It's a wonderfully meaty fish. Careful not to get any bones lodged in your throat. Oh yeah. Mm. That's really good. I've always loved rui. It's just really meaty, very, very rich. It's almost uh, almost like jelly as well in texture. It's just like a lot, a lot of fat on that fish. You deep fry it and honestly it goes so well with botta and plain rice. It's the best way of having it. It's a very simple dish, isn't it? It's just marinated in some turmeric and some salt and fried in some mustard oil. That's it. It's just amazing. That's it. Really it's super, super simple. Oh, I also want to try the sun. Three types we've got here. There's a red. There's a green. And there's also another green. I don't know what the difference is between the three of them. All I know is that there are three different variants, three different types of spinach. But what we're going to try here is the red spinach. This is called Lal Shag, literally red spinach. I'm going to try this one because this is very, very unique to Bangladesh. It's very, very popular and it's got a little bit of a, uh, I want to say a bit more of an earthy taste to it. And you know you've got to have a bit of lemon with uh, Lal Shag. Of course, of course. So let me get a little bit of on my plate. I remember having this in my village growing up when my parents used to take us back to the village we always used to have some red spinach on the dinner table and there's something just so so comforting and beautiful about it right lemon juice red spinach mix it up let's go mm. oh. It's got a little bit of a bitter aftertaste. It does, yeah. Doesn't it? It has a bitter aftertaste. That's very bitter, actually. To be honest, I, d I don't think I've ever actually had it. I think it's when we have it at home, it's we have a lot more garlic in it. Yeah, true. Whereas true. this one, there's less garlic. Less, less garlic. Pure yeah. red spinach. Nirob Hotel. Fantastic array of loads of different foods on offer. Here in Puram Dhaka, you've got to navigate these streets before you can get in here. But it is absolutely delicious, and this place is certainly worth trying. This is our first stop here in Puram Dhaka. We'll bring you so much more as we get along. We've just 
just been walking across the streets of Purandaka, old Dhaka here, and we've come across this very, very peculiar looking fruit. I've never seen anything like this in my life. It looks like some sort of hedgehog. It looks like an apple that got attacked by a hedgehog and a porcupine at once. This is the end product. I have no idea what. Makna, makna. Makna. Is it Banglai? Banglai makna. Makna. Alright, it's called makna. No idea what it is, what family it's come from. He's just peeled it, and after you peel it, you get this sort of white flesh inside, and within that, sort of strips of seeds are within the white flesh. He's gonna show me how to eat it because I have no idea. Okay. So we get a, a seed, it's like a seed that's lodged in between the white flesh and there's like a little bit of a membrane on top of it. So look, that's the membrane. We get rid of that and we dash it, throw it away and you're left with a seed. But we're not done yet. What happens next? Poison. <laughs> Okay. So they're saying you get this seed and you basically have to crack the shell so you give it a bite and then on the inside you've got this white flesh almost like a white powder and that's effectively the bit you want to eat. Is it tasty? Is it tasty? It tastes like something fundamentally that you're not meant to eat. But it doesn't talk about it. It doesn't talk about it. It's just for it. It's a compassion. It doesn't talk about it. He's just saying exactly how I feel, which is there's actually not much flavor in here at all. It's not salty, it's not sweet, it's not juicy, it's not ripe. It's basically like this white powder that's inside. You bite it and it's very much like tofu. It tastes of absolutely nothing. It's a bit powdery, uh, it's a bit brittle the inside, but it genuinely tastes like nothing. I'm very, I'm just perplexed about what on earth this thing is and actually why people eat it. This is the Dhaka city, the old, old city people. Ah. They like this on too much like. So apparently this is very, this is ex almost exclusive to old Dhaka. It's very popular here. People have been eating this for generations and it's usually the elder generations, the elders here, that eat this kind of food. It's just something that's synonymous with the culture here in Purandaka. So I'm super, super happy that we've tried this. Even though in terms of taste and flavor, I have not been able to derive much utility from it. But it looks incredible and it's a totally different experience. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Namtaki? Makna. The Makna. Thank you very much. Very, very nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, on with the journey. Let's go. Thank you. Let's give this guy his money. No, 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 no. Keep on. Like them. Keep on. Keep on. No, this is for advisor for gift. Okay. They're not taking any money from me either. So, thank you very much. I took pose then. Let's pose that. Pose that. Pose that. Pose that. Makna man. We'll do better. We'll do better. My dear, we'll do better. Joining me on this food adventure is none other than Diplomat Dad and Nish. We are gonna have a great time because our friend over here doesn't eat any spice. He doesn't That's eat chili, right. he doesn't eat curry. How are you feeling? Uh, not looking forward to this. Why? Uh, because I don't eat spice. <laughs> well, as long as, as long as you're able to walk <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> All right, boys, are we ready? The chicken kebab. Let's go. All right, guys, the next part of our Purandaka tour brings us to the one and only Bismillah Kebab. This place is well known throughout history, serving the good people of Dhaka all sorts of different types of meats and kebabs. Now, because we're here during the day, the main framework of the restaurant is closed. That doesn't mean they're entirely closed because on display here is some chicken kebab. They call it Jali Kebab. 
and it's basically chicken mince the little bit of onions some spices they batter it in eggs and then they pan fry on this amazing device come on and have a look at this it's just this massive pan almost frying pan they put oil on it and then they basically fry all the goods deep fry so we're gonna try one of these and see how it goes Bye. I've been given the jali kebab look at this you can see the egg here on the exterior inside is that chicken mince nice and crispy where it's been deep fried open that up oh look at that soft chicken white onion you can see how fresh it is this looks absolutely delicious all right here goes mm. oh my word that is fantastic so so spicy you got the sweetness from the onions it's lovely and crispy on the exterior that chicken is cooked to perfection it's nice and spicy but it's sort of counteracted with sweetness from the onions the egg gives it a lovely fluffy exterior and it's so hot and so fresh this is absolutely delicious this is a very very nice way of having a kebab you wouldn't find a chicken kebab like this in the uk this is a very street food bangladeshi way of having this kind of food it's absolutely delicious this is basically all local produce locally sourced meats locally sourced ingredients locally sourced spices and cooked in the most local way possible this is why this tastes extra special this chicken kebab is like no other all right i'm gonna get my friend dan pasha to get involved bp right. let's see this chicken kebab all right i'm gonna do this one bite Oh, but can I wait for context? DP doesn't eat anything other than all day breakfast and, and salads and salad bangers and mash here and there. He does not have curry, he does not have spice. But today, for us, for Cuisine TV, on behalf of Her Majesty's government, <laughs> lovely. Do you like it? Yeah, a lot of flavor, a lot of onion. I like it. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's sweet, very nice. Are you going to be eating on the streets of Dhaka more often? Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Only if you're here. Thank Definitely. you very much, that's my exit. <laughs> Great. Bismillah kebab, chicken kebab, absolutely delicious. We're going to be having some Bangladeshi tea. This is the best kind of tea you're going to find. This is one in a million. If you're a tea drinker, if you're a fan of hot drinks, you have to come to Bangladesh for the tea alone. It's so delicious. So what we've got here is the special Bangladeshi tea. Basically consists of a hell of a lot of milky froth. And then is that special tea, which is brewed for hours and hours on this lovely metal device. They just have it on the fire and they have the milk also on the fire and they mix the two together to make this incredible tea. And then on the top, that little leftover milky skin as it were, that's left behind, that's called malai. They grab a little bit of that malai and they dash it on top of the tea as well. I'm gonna try that with a little bit of bakir kani, which is a very, very popular Bangladeshi snack. It's basically a, a biscuit. It's almost like paratha that's wrapped up into layers and then they cook it in the tandoor and then it comes out super, super crispy. This, Naeem will tell you all about this, but I've got this purely for the purposes of enjoying with the tea because that's the traditional way of having things. So first things first, let's take a sip of this tea. Oh my God. That is unbelievable. That's super hot, super, super hot because the milk is hot and the tea is hot, but there's something about it that's just so creamy, sweet and delicious and that lovely milky sort of froth, that creamy skin that they put on top as well, just takes things up a notch. That's gonna taste absolutely delicious. It's almost like solidified cream. It's so, so amazing. That tea is honestly one in a million. It's so good. Bangladesh is obviously known for its tea. In the Northeast, they've got huge tea gardens. People from around the country, around the world go to visit. They export tea all around the world. If you want a good tea, you've got to come to Purandaka. I'm going to get a little bit of this. Mm. This? Dipped in here. 
Oh my god. Getting an 11 hour flight from London all the way here is worth it just for this. It's worth it just for this combination of Bakir Khani and Deshi Cha. Absolutely phenomenal. What a way. What a way to enjoy tea. What a way to enjoy snacks. Bangladesh, I love you. And that brings us to the end of episode one of Cuisine in Bangladesh. Join us next time where Naeem and team continue gallivanting around Purandaka. Enjoy some elite biryani and somehow he manages to step in sewage. <laughs> <laughs>